Yo guys, it's Deezer HD here, and today uh, I've got a tutorial to show you. Um, I uploaded a preview of this effect, which I did in Cinema 4D. Um, had about 22 hour render time in uh, Cinema 4D, which is quite unbelievable because it's only 6 seconds long. But what I'm going to be doing is showing you over 3 tutorials, I think. And what we're going to be doing on this one is just setting up our basic scene. So this is going to be the shortest one. In the second one, uh, we'll start animating and moving uh, our objects using a motor, um, which is in Cinema 4D. And also turbulence and wind, maybe a bit of gravity. And then for the third day, we're going to be, well, third part, we're going to be lighting and texturing our objects. So the first thing we're going to do is basically, none of it's going to be moving, we're going to model this uh, shape here which doesn't take long at all and we're just going to get our basic scene set up and do the render settings so let's get straight into this uh, first thing we'll do is we'll start our render settings um, we're going to go with a width of 1280 and a height of 720 and that will make it full HD we can crank the resolution up if you want to but uh, 72 pixels Per, per inch is fine for me. I think that's what it stands for. Uh, the frame rate we leave at 30 and we're going to change the frame range to all frames. And I think we're going to crank up our timeline to 200 frames down here and just make sure that that's the right thing. Um, the next thing we're going to do is actually we're going to change our renderer. Um, this you can only do in R13 but if you have R12 we can stu still do the tutorial um, but it's a bit harder. The render settings on R12 because we're going to be using is motion blur, so you need to go to effect sub uh, vector motion blur and just turn that on. But I'm going to be using the physical renderer for this one, so we're going to go into our uh, anti-aliasing, uh, sorry, our physical settings, and uh, we're going to put on depth of field and motion blur. We're going to leave those as they are, and uh, we're going to put our sampler to progressive. And I did this is because if you click this little black arrow. I firstly started off rendering it and it was taking 20 minutes a frame and because um, I use all the threads in my computer um, when I render heavy projects because I knew it would take a long time due to the materials and stuff um, I thought right I'll go into progressive and I'm going to change the progressive mode to a time limit or no, actually I'll put a pass count and I knew that 35 after because I was doing lots of little renders and just seeing how long it would look good and I remember it's an animation so you're not going to notice all these you can see it's still got a bit of grain but because it's moving you don't really notice it so that doesn't matter so 35 for our pass count and I left the rest um, went into options and also changed the ray depth to 6 6 sorry reflection depth to 2 and the shadow depth to 6 6 again sorry and uh, you can add ambient occlusion but that does uh, make your render times a lot longer and uh, it's it's not that helpful because we're using quite a dark scene anyway and because it's we're using um, a softbox well, we will be um, the, the area shadows we'll be using will be creating enough um, shadowing anyway you can use it if you want to but it just takes a lot longer to render so I'm not going to have that on and um, also in the save module, I forgot about this one, where we're going to put on our format as a quick time movie and go on to options and you want to put this as a H.264 compression so it's not a big file size either. So that's our render settings done and what we're going to grab now is we want a floor, also hold down we want a background um, and we want to right mouse click our floor and go Cinema 4D tags and compositing and you want this floor to be take off self shadowing and put compositing background on there and there we go and then we want to model our uh, toruses which is what we're going to be using so we're going to go into our objects section here and you want to grab a torus and we're going to put this on our Z plane and I think this has got enough sections anyway so we can just hide these two here by double clicking the top light here so you can't see it we don't actually need to see it and uh, what we can do is we can we could actually make it probably let's just see how big our floor is let's just drag this up let's 
to make sure it's in the right place like that so it's on the surface maybe just made this a bit smaller the ring radius and uh, take in our pipe radius as well so it's about that big okay let's make sure that's on the floor again perfect anyway somehow I don't know how I did that but um, we're going to zoom in and then we can go on this and we can hit C and that makes it editable and if we go into this selection you can see we can start selecting faces and pulling them out and stuff but we're not going to be doing that we're going to go into select and loop selection so what I did was I went around the whole thing and I selected you can do this as randomly as you like but you just want to go around the whole thing and uh, just select every oops not that way just this, these type of loops that go around uh, this way rather than around. You can do it the other way, add some variation. I mean, copying an animation isn't always the best way, thing to do. You want to make your own to make it creative. Let's just select uh, that one there. And then what I did was I went to right mouse click, I went to extrude, and I just extruded that a little bit. And I also went to inner uh, extrude inner, and just drag that in a little bit, and then went to bevel. And this will let, allow us to have some really nice highlights on that as well. So now we've made it a little bit bigger, we can uh, grab our torus and just move it back up. So we can hit uh, put it back into modeling mode and come back into live selection and just drag this up. So it's exactly on that floor there. And you noticed in our video you can see it bursts into two and uh, there's no speciality with this I just duplicated it so command C and command V so we can call this uh, left torus I guess Oops. and right torus and we can call we can drag these um, here and we hit Alt G or Option G and we can call this scene just to keep it organized and the top here we can do the same or we can right mouse click and go to group where there it is and we can just call this Taurus Tauruses and that's basically what I'm going to be showing you to do today so it's not a long tutorial today just very short just to show you how to get this basic scene set up so uh, check the other video out, the link will be in the description for the example so you can have a look at that um, that's the actual one I uploaded with the sound so that will be in the description so we can carry on doing this and remember just be creative and make what you what you like what do you like to make sorry and uh, we're going to carry on doing this um, I'll make a new tutorial for maybe later on in the week or I'll make it as soon as I can. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you very soon. Thank you.